Okay, welcome back to the Scorecast Next. We have got a special guest with us, and it is Mr. Ross Edgley over there. So, <laughs> who became three this week? It's exciting. <laughs> what was that? Um, two became Spice one. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's different. That's me and you. <laughs> anyway, Spice Girls. Well, anyway. We're letting day. I, Ross, is that, it's his first time, so he's not allowed to be question master. Yeah. You are Hulkamania, so you can start. <laughs> Just for anyone who's listening on the podcast. Oh yeah, Dave's wearing a uh, <laughs> No, I always, oh, just to make the point that I always wear a headband. If, if you know not, anything about Ross Edgley, you'll know that he's, he's, he's got a headband <laughs> obsession, is that thing. fair? I've got quite a collection. It's his thing. Yeah, right? Everyone's got to have a thing, right? This is my thing. You've got to have a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a Hulkamania band, I don't know, everyone knows. Because I <laughs> look back on all the other videos, you'll see. <laughs> anyway, we're going to mix up a little bit. Question, I'm going to say I'm going to be question master as yeah. well, but you've got a couple of additional ones, haven't you? Yeah. Um, and we're jumping, we're going to jump around a bit because we've... Uh, the question been flooding in. When people <laughs> found out that Ross was coming, and then we're going to kick one off because um, we've done we've done a bit of a workout together involving some pull-ups. We had a great question from um, I would love and uh, I always love reading out their names. <laughs> he doesn't practice them before, so yeah. I'm very bad. Um, I'm dyslexic, basically. So I find it difficult to say. It makes Tim Tim likes so enjoy it. Um, so Dobby yeah. underscore Weasley says how, and this is specifically for Ross how. How do I do more pull-ups? Does the height of the pull-up bar from the ground matter? <laughs> <laughs> and I, that's before, not, that's not fair, is it? <laughs> no, it does matter because when Ross was doing them, because he's not as tall, he had to actually use a box no. to reach the bar. So the height of the bar did matter because if the bar is too high, you can't reach it. You're not going to be able to do any pull-ups. Do you know what? That actually does raise a good point. Okay, genuinely, one, I do need a baby step when we were doing them earlier, but two, if if you use a baby step and you start your pull up from the top of the movement, you can then use the stretch reflex. We were yes, talking about that. Exactly. So there's the eccentric phase. The eccentric, the lats are engaging, but they are lengthening. So therefore, that concentric phase, where they're contracting and going back up, yeah. is going to be that much more powerful. Yeah. So if you do, like me, use a baby step, yeah. it will be easier than trying to, again, because I'm so sort of short and built like a hobbit, if I was <laughs> like that, I'm there on my tiptoes. That is going to be a harder set for me because yeah. I'm starting it from a dead stop. And we were talking about this yeah, yeah. where you are interrupting the stretch reflex and, and it is starting your, your repetition from a dead stop. Yeah. The same way that if you were floor pressing on a bench, instead of like using that stretch reflex, bang, and the elasticity of the muscles, no, from a dead stop. So Dobby actually raises yeah, a really yeah. good point and there. I think he's <laughs> Just to add to that, that he's talking about doing more pull-ups, something that we might recommend for someone, say if they're, he can do five, uh, once he's done his five, does he do another couple of reps uh, of eccentrics when he can't actually, he's, he's got, got the strength to do the concentric and, and sort of joking aside, having a lower bar yeah. would help him yeah. to be able to start at the top and yeah. just do the lower phase. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> we mock originally, but a great yeah, question. It's a very good question. It's a good, I just it threw me a curveball. Yeah. You didn't know where to go, did that you? Is, yeah, it's good. Um, right, so second question is um, from on YouTube. So thanks to uh, he didn't normally for someone to get their question read out, they have to uh, bombard like, us with um, positive reinforcement and we like to affirmations. Have nice compliments us before right, we get okay, question. Yeah. So yeah. Sometimes they Romance, go like, "Oh, yeah. amazing!" Yeah, but yeah, anyway. yeah, it is. It's that yeah. foreplay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 I get it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Yeah, so. His, his name, I'm not sure if this is his, his actual name, as can happen on this. So his name is Hi, I'm Frank. <laughs> no, which, if that's his real name, first name Hi, second name Frank. <laughs> um, and he says, um, How can I feel like I'm shouting? Um, I'm going to turn it down. Bring it down. <laughs> uh, how can a busy student, I assume he's talking about himself, um, it's like, you know, when you go, like, oh, I've got this friend who's got a problem. He's <laughs> got this thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> How can a busy student build a decent physique while at home and not having much free time? Oh. I'm going to pass, you go. Oh, yeah, well, we, we were, again, we're talking about this. But people are in for a treat on our YouTube channel because we've mm. covered a lot of this already. Um, but we were saying, you know, Hans Selye, 1936, uh, famous physician, basically, um, I was going to say it's a bit of a sad story, it's not a sad story, but, but he was giving uh, rats a little bit of poison, a little bit more, a little bit more, and they developed this kind of um, tolerance to it, whereas he found giving the rats a lethal dose of poison, you know, they 
killed over and died. Yeah. Sad story. But he was by giving them if a little like bit rats. of a, Well, yeah. That, <laughs> apologies to any rats watching. <laughs> but what was interesting is by building up their tolerance, he found that stress and stimuli was the key to adaptation. That is the law of adaptation. And what's, what's happened is, you know, years have passed and now in strength and conditioning, we were saying your body doesn't know whether you're in a gym, it doesn't know if you're lifting a barbell or your body weight, it doesn't understand in terms of cardio, you know, looking at lactic threshold, VO2 and those physiological adaptations to endurance. It doesn't understand if you're rowing, cycling, you know, quite often it understands stress and stimuli. That is it. Yeah. So in terms of I'm a busy student and, you know, I can't get to the gym, Brilliant, then master a handstand push-up. Mm. I mean, you possess a obscene depth <laughs> handstand push-up, Tim. And I still want to see what you can actually overhead press. But what's amazing is your shoulders just understand, mm. yes, we can generate force. With a barbell or your body weight, doesn't matter. Yeah. We can generate force. I think that's an interesting thing because, it, again, thinking about what it's like to be a student, I've done quite a lot of S&C work okay. over the years with student sport. Um, and some of the challenges are around budgets, obviously. So if you're not paying for gym membership because you know how to use your own body weight, you can train at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That actually maybe gives you a little bit more food to get the right um, nutrition, get your, you know, your body comp nailed down because actually you can make better choices because you're not. To be fair, like university gym memberships are cheap, like 90 quid for a year's membership. But still, like, budgets are tight, and that's the other thing. So if you understand how to use your own body weight and how you can train, like you say, you can, you can implement stress, and body weight is not for beginners. It's so many progressions. I mean, I train at home all the time, with busy work, family to look after. So even in sessions, I've got a pull-up bar, which was, you can get off fucking Amazon or Argos for yeah. pretty cheap, you can just put in your doorway. So you've got options. There's a set of rings, 15 quid off Amazon for a set of rings. Yeah. Um, and that's gonna give you all the training tools that you need yeah. if you know how to use them properly. And then and the other thing is just get the nutrition on point. Like yeah. you got to balance going out and having a few beers. And yeah. but I, being around university environments, I see a lot of students these days that are jacked. Yeah. Like a lot of students, people. Like, yeah. I, I, don't know, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> um, some of them, but there's people like students who are good nick. Like it's yeah. possible to. They got actually got quite a lot of time yeah. to get in the gym and you can train well, six, seven times a week. He's saying he's busy. Maybe he's you know he's not doing uh, he's not doing a geography, history, geography degree. Yeah. He hasn't got two hours a week. Maybe he did a proper degree like me and did engineering. Well, well. twenty. Five hours of lectures a week, so he's busy. The other thing with with being able to train at home because he's doing his body weight stuff potentially um, means he's going to save saves a lot of time. Like that, mm -hmm. even if just the yeah. commute to the gym or not. Like mm -hmm. um, yeah. I know for me, sometimes I find it. Sometimes training at home can be hard in that, like you go to the gym, it's a space where you always work out, and like, your brain. Do you know what I mean you almost like know that? Whereas mm -hmm. at home, it's like I'm, just, I'm like sometimes I find it, I can find it hard to get like a. A hard session done yeah. at home, potentially depending. You but I like a lot, right? You've got a gym in your home. Yeah, lots. And, and I think to that point, it makes you a bit more creative yeah. because we were talking as well about training variables. Too often, people, if you go down the gym, you are probably limited by this range of motion on the pec deck, and then up oh, over here, we've got like you know, hamstring girls, and you know. But yeah. no, if you're at home, all of a sudden you're like, oh, I don't know, start doing some crazy delt work with a can of beans, yeah. you know, or like quite often when I'm on holiday, unfortunately, my girlfriend is you know my weight so I'm mm. like right hop on my back and start yeah. doing better you know so you get so creative yeah. and that's another thing that again we've discussed they're in for a real treat on mm. YouTube <laughs> but training variables yeah. just get so creative too many people and I always say this think in terms of sets and reps uh, Verka Shamsky one of the greatest strength and conditioning coaches uh, pioneered Soviet Union training principles and you know he's he's uh, was there saying you know the, the repetition and weight scheme that you see in gyms all over the world and in all fitness magazines that is fine for the average coach and the average personal trainer but we must think beyond that if we to our achieve our goal which was mm. kind of optimal human performance yeah. and it's the same you know too many people think oh, how many sets is that how many reps you know three sets of ten isn't it exactly <laughs> yeah. yeah you know yeah yeah five reps and that strength but anymore is hypertrophy but you do too much that's endurance and then you're gonna tone you know yeah. and toning once i did 21 reps and it was completely out the window and it's like no you know don't think like that i mean we were doing the the war walks Oh my god, and the, the runway, gunway, just think outside mm, yeah. of repetitions and weight schemes and that's the thing, training at home can be such an advantage and sometimes I do it just to get creative. Yeah, yeah. I sometimes have seen on Ross's Instagram um, when he's training at home and you cooking a steak at the same time. 
<laughs> like sometimes at home, I did one where I was like, I was doing some planche push ups and opening the mail. Like, <laughs> yeah. So you multitask. You can, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You rest. Yeah, 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 it does. It does. <laughs> so I, I won't say it's the most intense session that I do. <laughs> no. But, but it's still training. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, so what I've done. Yeah. So I'm Frank. I hope that answers your question. If you're not sure about like, We've said basically, yes, you can do some body weight stuff at home. We've got our free beginner's guide. If you yes, get all the pushing and the core stuff doesn't need any equipment. The pulling stuff needs like a, a bar or some rings like Tim said, you can get dead cheap off the internet. So the, the beginner's guide is free. You can get that in the, um, in the comments, uh, sorry, in the, in the description below. So you can get that for free and you can get yourself started. You can certainly get started with the pushing and the core stuff. It's just mm. for pulling movements and rowing stuff, we need something to pull against, so rings or, mm. or some sort of bar. But you can get a simple setup at home for that, save yourself some time and then, uh, mm. can you get a decent body? Well, yeah, is the answer. You can get more than decent. You can set yourselves a bit high, you can get better than, de better yeah. than decent. Agreed. Yeah. Right. Um, real simple, I mean, Ross, you got a problem with bandana? No, I think it's, <laughs> uh, they look good on you. Two v one. good on you. Um, cardio, this is from Leonardo on YouTube. Yep. Italian. Um, maybe. The famous, um, amazing. I don't know. That's it. But if it is, what is interesting Caprio? is, is <laughs> cardio. I did notice the cardio, sorry. I'm interrupting you. I hate you when he does that. Right, short answer is cardio necessary for fat loss? Go. Uh, short answer you, uh, cardio is valuable to create a calorie deficit. The laws of thermodynamics, calories in versus calories out, yes, they do apply to us humans. Um, and cardio is just a valuable tool to create that deficit. How you do it, whether it's high intensity interval training, uh, low intensity training on a rower, on a cycle, doesn't matter. Just use it to create one, a calorie deficit, and two, to improve how your body assimilates food, improves insulin sensitivity, therefore your body's able to assimilate carbohydrates a little bit better. Sure answer. We could go, we could take that into, into calisthenics and we could go actually just put a circuit of exercises together, short rest periods, high volumes. I mean, CrossFit is, is done exactly that sort of thing. It's not actually cardio, but it's mm. just strength training done in a high intensity environment. We can do the same body, we go pull-ups onto push-ups, onto dips, you're gonna get your heart rate up, that's gonna do exactly the same thing as going for a run, right? It's just, you're just gonna get a slightly different stimulus and it's more strength-based rather than endurance-based run. You're getting better at doing that kind of work exactly. rather than getting better at going for a run. It was yeah, exactly touched on before about, it's, a, it's about knowing what you want out of your training. Yeah. So understanding what you want, and then why you're doing the things you're doing, and if, mm. it's, if those, while you're doing what you're doing matches up with what your goal is, then that's great. Mm. Yeah. And how you get there, there's a whole range yeah. of things of ways to do it. Yeah. Work harder, that's the basic thing. If you want to, you want to burn some fat, you've got to get your, you've got to get your intensity up. Yeah, yeah that's exactly that. Right, my second question, oh, I'm going to go straight to. in. Got to. Uh, this is also going to be a relatively quick one. Chris <laughs> Holden, six, uh, from YouTube. Um, he is asking about, he says, when I do pull-ups, I get real bad lower back pain afterwards. Is it common for beginners? Do I need to strengthen my lower back? What's the best exercise if so? Uh, just to give you an idea, I'm 40 years young, five foot 10, and he's lost a little bit of weight. Uh, but he's also, he's got five to six good pull-ups in a set, but he's obviously getting some sort of back niggle off the back of that. Right. So my, I'll go my initial thoughts, I'll mm. let you guys jump in. Um, I'm gonna, first of all, I think the back pain could potentially, for me, without seeing it, it's difficult, and this is just spitballing ideas, but if you're losing control of the midsection on your pull-ups, so you're allowing the back to arch, which happens when the, the lat shortens, so the lat, which is a major movement, major um, mover in your pull-up, is gonna come from the, Front of the bicep here goes all the way down, round the back onto the pelvis. So when you shorten it through the pull-up movement, what it's going to try and do is going to arch the back. It wants to kind of create a shortest position as a concentric force action. Mm -hmm. So that can actually start to put some pressure on the low back. So when we coach pull-ups, what we're looking to do is make sure the abs or the midsection and core stays engaged to keep the pelvis in neutral. Yes, it's harder, and but it looks like a much more strict form. The body moves on a nice line, it holds good tension, and we're not seeing this arching through the back. So if you've got some weakness around the midsection, that's gonna throw up two things for me. One, uh, your core maybe needs a little bit of work because that's why you can't hold good position. And two, if the core's weak, that potentially lends itself to disc problems and potential like just vertebrae, not having enough space to move, bumping against each other, generally causing a little bit of a grumble. So there's a couple of things there for my idea to play around with. Often people get back pain. I'm gonna let one of you boys pick up on this. Have you come across people before where they go, I've got back pain, so I need to get my back stronger, so what I'm gonna do is hyperextensions. Mm. Okay, is that the best, is that what the actual problem is? The back isn't, is it painful because it's weak? Mm. In my experience, it's actually yeah. cause weak and it can't hold postural control. Right? You guys so it's something like the dead bugs that there's a free yeah. video on YouTube for, you can link to that um, down there, um, for dead bugs, which will help build up some of your core strength, um, which is likely, like, 
as we'd always say, if you've got a, an injury or pain, like you want to get checked out properly rather mm-hmm. than just because we haven't seen you, we we don't know what that is, and we're not physio, so we're not, mm-hmm. you know, we're not medical practitioners, so you you, you want to try and and seek some proper medical advice really first, um, but then then working with with some of these things or some of these ideas to what would uh, help try and um, get, you know reduce the pain and get get you back into um, back into pain free movement and. As Tim says, that that um, that tightness in your in your lat and losing that midsection position w- will have an effect on that lower lower um, lower back position. Something else that might be happening, like I say, we haven't seen it, so we don't know. But if you're if you're real tight through your thoracic as well, and as you're trying to um, as you're trying to pull yourself up, you're trying to get those shoulder blades back and down together. The only sort of way, if you if you're not if you've got no strength through there to be able to retract them, you'll um, You'll, you'll start to arch through to give you that feeling of getting them back, whereas actually mm. all you're doing is just arching through you yeah, yeah. Mm. And, and busting your, uh, your rib cage up to give you that feeling of retraction through the shoulder blades. So mm. that's a, a common week, like core being weak, being weak through mid lower track yeah. rhomboid area, that's something that we see often as well. Mm. And then compensations that could lead to lower back pain potentially, mm. but mm. like I say, if we haven't seen you, it's difficult to say. It's say-up. exactly that. I can't really add much more to that. That was exactly it, but what's brilliant is um, we were talking about again. It's going to be a great. <laughs> when people watch it, it's going to, we've already kind of covered this. But that kinesthetic, that biofeedback, that it's amazing that your community start to ask these questions. It's amazing. Um, in other sports, you know, powerlifting, you know, guys will deadlift for years and not ever wonder why they're getting niggles. Searing back pain. Exactly. <laughs> and they'll just put more weight on and more weight. And that's what's amazing about all calisthenics and body weight conditioning, that it will highlight that. And, and I think from my point of view, I can't really add much more to what Tim Davis said. You know, like I said, it's, it's always hard because we've not seen you and it's law of biological individuality. We're mm. more different than we are alike. So you'd have to see all of the limbs and everything in action. But... Having said that, it's brilliant that you're already asking these questions of yourself because within that kinetic chain of your pull-up, something is wrong. And it's amazing that you've identified it because it's the amount of people who would have just cracked on and gone, oh, you know, maybe it's just like a little bit of fatigue. No, ask that question. The last question comes on Facebook from Oliver Kelly. Sounds like it probably is his actual name. Real name. Real one. It might, it might not be. He might have like, like Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he's a teacher, often they'll have fake profiles, like because they don't want the kids to find them. Okay. Let's not get bogged down. Okay. <laughs> uh, his question is, do you like my name? <laughs> Love your name. No. So uh, Oliver, he says, hi guys. I have a Q and A. Uh, I have a yeah, Q Q A. Here's a question for us. Why is a handstand an easier exercise than a planche? I am finding the planche on bars. Um, a little easier than handstands, which to him he thinks seems odd. Thanks. Um, and now I just thought one thing on this before we get into just a time of detail on that it links back to that first question about um, about that pull up because I was going to say uh, one thing I was going to mention on that was um, the the height we were we were laughing initially again the height of the bubble like because we we're thinking gravity it literally makes no difference whether how high up it is you know it, it changes as we go to the moon but on on Earth if we're training gravity is the same it's constant mm. one one and then. Um, you were also talking, uh, Ross, about how the, the body just uh, adapts to the stress we put on it. So it doesn't care, it doesn't know if you're in the gym or at home, it doesn't care if it's a barbell or if it's, a, if it's just uh, pushing with your body weight, whatever. It just, whatever the stimulus is, it will adapt to that. And that's because gravity is constant, it doesn't change on it, so mm. you, and your body doesn't, doesn't care. Mm. Um, with that planche and handstand, the, the thing that's changed, gravity isn't changing, the thing that's changing is your body position. So in a handstand, we're vertical and we're trying to stack on top of each other. So um, you're, you've not got an awful lot of um, uh, distance from any lever, uh, pivot points to any levers. Whereas in the, in the planche, you take that and you go 90 degrees mm-hmm. and you go bang, your hands are on the floor in the middle and your shoulders are however mm. d- 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 x distance away from your hands and your legs are x distance mm. the other way and your shoulders are having to take a, a, a huge amount of force you know the mass times the distance for that lever length mm. whereas in the handstand you really haven't got that you're stacked on top of your pivot point mm. so the handstand is is easier in terms of strength but more difficult or harder in terms of balance and the planche the other way around so the planche should be harder in terms of strength but easier in terms of balance mm. but that's just because that's just physics yeah. um, it's good that we've got uh, somebody with a first class master's 
Engineering, <laughs> isn't it? It, it helps. It helps. Yeah. On Loughborough University, for <laughs> Illumina, part of the Illumina. But that is it. Every exercise has, you know, a strength curve. You know, to, to go back to some of my experience with a, with a barbell on a, on a deadlift, for instance, most people will be able to lock out mm. that deadlift at the highest point. You know, there's easy, but getting it off the floor, yeah. well, no, the strength curve, looking at anything the same, you know, Beach weights, let's look at the bicep curl as well. You know, a lot of people when they're there, that's the easiest point because again, gravity yeah. makes it easy. There, yeah. there's not an awful lot. When you're at a run, yeah, that's gonna be hard. Yeah. And Olympic lifting, that strength curve starts to get more intricate, but it's still there. You know, I know we were talking mm. about that force velocity curve. Again, you're in for a treat. <laughs> <there. laughs> but um, we've already spoke about that, but it's it's the same. And and what's amazing is looking at again, law of biological individuality, when you can start to see people, you know, like Oliver, he will have different strengths and weaknesses. And genuinely, not just saying it, it's one of the things that you guys as coaches, I've been a massive fan of you guys for ages because you're able to do that not only uh, with with you know sort of Olympians but Paralympians as well to say where are your strengths and I think with Paralympians I find it fascinating we were talking about mm. some of the the adaptive nature of the human body that when you have someone like an amputee they super compensate in different areas that makes them like incredible and, and as a sports scientist I'm like that's amazing and so the that sort of strength curve that particular exercise it might be a new exercise it might be a new sport it completely changes mm. and again it's amazing that a lot of the guys on your community are already sort of questioning that because I yeah. think this is getting deep, but you know, Aristotle, the only thing I know is I know nothing. Mm. You know, and it, I always try to say, you know, everyone and encourage them to become like an epistemocrat and question everything, yeah. even your own abilities, your own knowledge, just question everything because in reality, no one knows, mm. you know. And we, we again, we, yeah. we talked about this earlier, some of the world's best athletes were just the ones that chose to do it their way. Yeah, yeah. Usain Bolt on paper is too tall to be a sprinter because he rocks when he comes out the blocks you know it takes him a while to get up to full speed well he's a fair few gold medals there so, <laughs> you know world records all right. his biomechanics are all right yeah. you know we were talking about michael johnson tim you made the great point you know that yeah if you remember he used to run upright and it was too but you know you said yeah that, yeah force you know yeah his stride was very short but the force that he could actually generate with the floor and um, sorry, I've gone off a complete yeah, tangent, no, but no, it is good. looking at everybody individually to ask, why is that easier for me? What's my limiting factor? How can I make that no longer a limiting factor? Yeah. And once you can do that, as I discovered today under your uh, masterclass with the human flag, you know, I was like, yes, strength's all right. Mobility is awful. And you're like, cool, let's work on that. And even after a few, you know, it yeah, wasn't yeah. great, but yeah, it yeah, was yeah, better. It change. Mm. And it was less of a limiting factor. Yeah. That'd be the same for Oliver, and that his limiting factor, potentially, you find a handstand harder, is just a skill acquisition. You yeah. just haven't learned the kinesthetic awareness of where your feet are. If, you, if you're in that planche position, you find it easy. You'll be one of the few, you should take actually real pride that you're probably one of the fewest people in the world who finds a planche easier than a handstand. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. a planche is hard. That is true. Like it's flipping hard. Yeah. So if you've got the shoulder, the anterior deltoid strength, the core connectivity to hold that planche, then flip and go for it and show everyone you can. Uh, but work on that handstand and find some nice progressions, which mean that you can start to get up against the wall and you can teach yourself that skill acquisition phase of, or process of actually how to control, how to make small money, fine motor control adjustments, where are my feet in relation to my hands, and how am I going to build on that? And it's just, you get what you train for. Like, I'd be interested actually to know if you've just done a lot more planche training than handstand. Because yeah. it might just be that you just, that's where you've stacked your, your time. So you've got better at it. Yeah. And this goes back to what we were talking about before, is you get what you train for at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think a great take home message um, for everyone from what Ross said is like, Ask more questions. I think mm. it's a great message. Like, mm. and it also ask, helps us for our Q and A. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, it, 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 <laughs> more content. But I mean, in, a, in, a, in a sort of yeah. serious, really serious way, like, ask questions. Like, why am I do? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Like, mm. why is that? And then someone said, like, why? Why? What? Well, ask this. Be like mm. a kid, almost like. Why, why, why? Yeah. And then if someone, if you haven't got an answer, go find it. If someone can't give you the answer, well then, why can't they give you the answer? Yeah. Maybe you don't need to trust what they're saying. It's being yeah. practical about your training. We mentioned it earlier again today about um, like program design and how am I going to structure this? And like we want, you to, we want to educate you so you can make your own programming decisions. If you know what you need for you, then that's way more effective. You're going to get way more out of it than us just going, here's 12 weeks, just follow yeah. this. Yeah. So, so be proactive and understand that you don't need to be sports scientists, but 
hopefully we put out enough stuff which helps you to actually start to piece some of this stuff together. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. I, I think that's one thing as well. And again, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this short, but I'm a huge fan of uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, famous American essayist, and he used to always say, teach a man principles and he can create his own methods. Mm -hmm. Genuinely, that's one thing why I've loved coming down here and actually meeting you guys for the first time. Because long before I actually met you and I followed you on social media, you are one of very few people who teach people principles so they can create their own methods. You don't say, here you go, follow that rep set, so just mm. go do that. Yeah. No, you actually teach people. And I've learned it firsthand today with yeah. the human flag. You taught me principles, we deconstructed the human flag. And I'm like, oh, and now I know how to do that. I can actually apply that to other things. And so genuinely, I think, I think that's amazing what the, you guys do. But asking questions on that, it becomes a community and a collective just exchanging ideas. So definitely give Ross a follow on Instagram, at Ross Edgley. Um, other social media platforms? Yeah, I think I'm on all of them. Twitter, Find YouTube, them. YouTube and They're Facebook. Soon, they are soon to be blessed with photos of human flags. We have to be like, sorting with some stuff today. And if you have on that about questions, if you've got any questions, comment in those below. Um, massive thank you for yeah, no, well, so coming down. We had a you. great time. You're going to see a load of uh, videos on YouTube with us training with him. Um, if you haven't subscribed to his YouTube channel, that's up by. We'll put that on his head. Bing. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you haven't got our free beginners guide, that's up there out of the way of my head. And uh, for last week's Q or the last Q and A that we did, that's down at the bottom there. So until next time, you can do it. Fastest missed. Fastest missed. <laughs> <laughs>